As many of you know, I'm not exactly an academic in any sense of the word. I always struggled through some of my classes, but every once in a while I'd pay attention. I mean, I always paid attention, but every once in a while I'd actually get something out of the class. I remember one teacher that always got something out of the class was Father Peter Laird. And Father Peter Laird is now the vicar general for the Archdiocese of St. Paul, Minneapolis. But he used to teach at the seminary, and he was a specialty, was a morality. And so he was teaching a class on morality, and he, he stepped away from his notes at one point and looked up and and he was talking about something very controversial, I'm sure, but he looked up and he says, how are you going to treat the prostitutes, those caught in adultery, those outcasts of the world? How are you going to treat them, not only in the confessional, but how are you going to treat them in your everyday life? And it caused me, of course, to stop and start contemplating this. Not only how am I going to treat those who I know are public sinners, but how do I treat them? How do we treat them? Of course, today we have a perfect example of what we're called to do. Here is Jesus, and he's teaching in the synagogue. He's teaching in the temple area. In the temple area, he's teaching there. And sure enough, the scribes and the Pharisees bring to him someone who is caught in adultery. And this, of course, is a very scandalous sin. As a matter of fact, this story is so controversial that in the early transcripts of the Bible, this was actually taken out because people did not believe at first that God would actually forgive someone caught in this grievous sin. But of course, we know that God is merciful and loving. But here's this example, and these Pharisees and scribes bring this woman to Jesus, but they don't care about her at all. See, what they're trying to do is they're trying to trick Jesus. Because no matter how he answers, it's going to be wrong. You see, the Mosaic law, the law of Moses, says that this woman, any person caught in adultery, is called to capital punishment, which in those days would be through stoning. This would be the most common way to do it. Yet we realize if we look back in the Bible that the Jewish people at this time no longer had authority to execute someone. Remember Jesus. What do the Pharisees and the scribes have to do with him? They go to the Roman authorities to have him persecuted, to have him killed. So if Jesus says to stone her, what would happen is they would turn him over to the Roman authorities and say, what authority do you have by this? But if Jesus were to say, turn her over to the Roman authorities, or let her go, they would say, well, then you're not following the law of Moses. It literally is a no-win situation for Jesus. If he lets her go, he's answering wrong. If he says to stone her, he's answering wrong. So the Pharisees don't care about the law. They don't. We know this. And neither do they care about this woman. They're simply using her is someone to try to trick Jesus. So they ask him this question, what should we do, teacher? And what does he say? It's very important to realize the first thing he does is he stops and he starts to contemplate and tries to figure out the right answer. And he writes something on the ground. But that's not important. It's not important what he writes on the ground. We don't know what he wrote on the sand. It doesn't matter. But he looks up and he answers in this way. Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And of course, we realize that everyone eventually drops their stone. And we can imagine this beautiful sight. All these angry people ready to condemn this woman. Dropping their stones and walking away. So they all leave. And there is Jesus and this woman, the only two left. And Jesus looks up. Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? And she replies, no one, sir. Then, of course, Jesus says these beautiful words. Neither do I condemn you. You see, Jesus sees something that the Pharisees and the scribes did not see. Jesus says that this is a human being. Someone who respects, deserves respect and dignity and love and mercy. Jesus cares for her. 
and wants her to live, not to die. And so he does not condemn her. He shows mercy and love. But so often we stop here in this story. We don't look at that next line. We tend to forget about that next line. You see, Jesus, yes, respects her and loves her. But he also cares about the law. He also cares about the teachings of the church. At least the Jewish religion at that time. And so what does he say? Neither do I condemn you. But then he says, go, and from now on do not sin any more. Jesus is not condoning the action in any way. He's saying, do not sin anymore. Turn away from this. It's not worth it. Yes, I love you. Yes, I want to bestow my mercy upon you. Yes, I see you as a human being. And I will love you no matter what. But do not sin anymore. He doesn't condemn her. But he doesn't, and he will not, condone a sin, condone an action that is contrary to love, contrary to the teachings of what we are called to live. My brothers and sisters, how do we treat those people who are in sin? How do we want to be treated when we are in sin? Yes, we want to be loved. Yes, we need to have mercy bestowed upon us. But we also want to hear that, that we are not called to live that way. We should be encouraged to turn away from our sin. We never, ever, 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 ever should judge a person. But if the action is bad, if the action is sinful, then as a Christian then as someone out of love, we have the responsibility to step up and say something. Yes, I forgive you. Yes, I love you. But I want you, we want you, we need to. Here, to turn away from that sinful action. How do we treat the prostitutes, the adulterers, the alcoholics, Whatever it may be in the back of your head right now that you're thinking, how do we treat them? How do we show them our love? How do we be like Christ to them? Showing them mercy and love, but at the same time, having courage to say, do not sin anymore.